Howdy cowboys and cowgirls, I'm Cowboy Jack and today I'm really excited. We're here at Heirloom Soils of Texas. That's really exciting. What is this behind me right here? That's a ginormous mountain of leaves. Well, why would we be here looking at a mountain of leaves here today on Earth Day? I'll tell you why, because it's a really cool place that takes things like these leaves and other green waste and turns them into things that we can use again. It's called green recycling. It's really important for our planet. And I'm here with Heirloom Soils of Texas in Porter, Texas with the absolute experts on the subject. So when you think about soil, what do you think? Just like dirt, right? Well, it's a lot more than just dirt. There's all kinds of different dirt and they're made from all kinds of different materials. Well, today I'm standing by this big pile of leaves and look right there. There's a big old mountain of like chunked up trees and pine trees and logs, all that. Did you know that that gets made into soil and compost too? It's really, really cool. So let's go check out some of this stuff. So look at this pile here. We've got a little bit of everything in here. See? I found myself a beautiful pine cone. Your boy Cowboy Caden would really like that. And I've got pine needles too, because we're in the great piney woods of Texas. So of course there's a lot of pine, but this is like wood chunks and things. Do you know where they get this material from? It's actually brought in by landscapers and other people that are doing yard work and they have all this green waste. Well, green waste isn't necessarily bad. Sometimes a tree might fall on your house or a tree might just need to be moved because they're going to build something. Well, just because they have to cut down a tree doesn't mean it has to go to a landfill. That's not what we want at all. They can actually bring it here and it'll get turned into some mulch or some soil or some compost, all kinds of different things because there's a lot of different products they make here. And I mean, do you get a size, an idea of how big this pile is? Look at this. I mean, we talk about this sometimes. Cowboy Jack's about six feet tall, right? I'm not even close to the top of this ginormous pile. So that means there's a lot of people involved in this green recycling. It's really, really exciting stuff. Well, do you guys want to see what happens after a landscaper brings some of this material in? Let's go check it out. Come on. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. See, these gentlemen right here brought in some green waste. That's things like these big limbs and all this other stuff. Like they just cleaned up a yard and brought in sticks just like this. And they're gonna get added to this pile right here. And that big, huge piece of equipment's gonna scoop it and lift it up and put it up on that pile. You know, they have to use really strong tools because they're moving a lot, a lot of weight. That looks like it's just grabbing it completely effortlessly and raising it up there. Boy, that is so cool. Wow, look at that big bucket dumping all the way at the top. That is such a huge device for lifting up all this debris. Wow. Do you guys get the magnitude and the size of that thing? It's absolutely huge. We're moving all this green recycling up to the top of the pile and it's gonna sit there for a while until it gets ground up into different products. See, rather than put that in the landfill, they're gonna stack it up up here so that we can reuse it in other ways, really important ways that we're gonna talk about. All right, to give you guys a size of this amazing pile of green recycling, I mean, look, you saw what we had before. This has been processed and screened already, so it's a lot smaller pieces. Obviously, I didn't pick up any ginormous logs, but I want you guys to feel how big this pile is. It's a huge pile. I'm gonna go ahead and go up there. You think I can do it? All right, you guys stay put. I'll be right back. Wow, this is a lot taller than I expected. Whew. 
Hello down there. Can you guys see me all the way up here? Wow, this is really cool. I feel like I gotta do something up here. Yeehaw! <laughs> hey, you guys ought to come up here and take a look too. All right, now from all the way up here, we can see a lot of things all around us. See, there's that big machine that was being used to move all that, those big parts. And over here, they've got all kinds of things. You guys see that big machine? That's actually a trommel screen. It's gonna be really cool to check out. We're gonna get a little bit closer to it in a minute. Wow. See, these big machines make it all really easy. They're making such quick work of such big jobs. All right, now what he's gonna do is he's got that bucket full of that product. He's gonna dump it in the hopper right there. We're gonna get to watch it. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. See, it's going right in the hopper. And then from there, it's gonna go into that round part that's rolling around like this. That's actually a screen. It's got all these different size holes on it. Wow, it's windy up here on top of the mountain. <laughs> but anyways, it's got all these holes in it. And it's gonna sort that out into two different sizes. The stuff going out the front that you see is really, really tiny. That's the best stuff for growing things like vegetables in, in your garden. The other side that's spitting that out, those are the bigger pieces. But anyways, it's so windy up here, we better get down. So here we are in front of the trommel screen. It does a really good job of sorting out the different sizes as they're broken down. So check this out, come in over here. See these right here are bigger pieces. See all those coming off? So they've made it all the way through that round thing and the round thing basically said, hey, you're too big, you won't fit through my holes. So we're gonna dump you off of this conveyor belt. But this over here, you can see it's so windy out here today, it's crazy. But this belt puts all of the fine product through. See, look at this. This kind of product would eventually be bagged up and bought, you know, maybe by you. And you could use it to plant vegetables at your own house. These are really cool. And see, it's got this huge conveyor belt. Wow, look at that, that's crazy. All right, guys, let's go take a look inside this trauma. We have to be really careful because there's a lot of big moving parts. But look at that. Wow, just peek in there. That's crazy. And then look at this product going up the conveyor belt right here. See, it's going all the way up this conveyor, and that conveyor, it looks like old tires or something. It's got all these lines on it to help it grip and lift it up. That's really cool. Whoa, there's another conveyor right here. We got to take a look at this one. This is the one that grabs the bigger pieces, and it's lifting them up and putting them in that pile. All right. Well, isn't that trommel cool? That's a really important tool for this business because they're sorting things out. You can't have big chunky pieces with little bitty pieces. They're put to different uses. So we need the little bitty pieces for things like our garden and the bigger things for all kinds of different stuff. So I'm actually right here by this giant front end loader. Look at the size of this bucket. It's absolutely huge. I mean, it's so big. Look at this. It's so big I can even stand in it. Boy, that's enormous. And it's a real important tool because they're moving a lot of big stuff a long way all over the place. This bucket can actually hold seven and a half yards. That's five plus two and then another half like a little baby finger. Seven and a half yards is about half of an entire dump truck in one scoop. Isn't that cool? Wow. I mean, it's such a big machine. Even the tires are huge. Look at it. I mean, those are ginormous tires. Wow, and all these hydraulics all over it. That's a really cool machine. I'm glad we got to check it out. And like I said, it's real important for the job. Just like all most really big machines, it runs on hydraulics. So there's cylinders pushing fluid to make power and lift and all kinds of cool stuff. Hey guys, does this stuff look familiar? Check this out. Let me grab a big handful. Look at this. Now, sometimes when we go to a playground, they have what they call kitty cushion down. This is the first stage of the making of that product. What it is, is they take soft woods like pine and they grind them up into pieces. See, right this stage of the process, 
this wouldn't be good because you could still get a splinter from this when you go run crazy on the playground we don't get splinters do we no it's more like this over here see like this stuff right here there's actually regulations on it and it cannot give you any splinters so look at this i'm rolling it all around in my hands and i'm not getting hurt at all Whew. sure does feel nice and see this would be what you'd see on the playground so if you were to fall like off of the slide i hope you don't but if you did this is really cushy and so you wouldn't get hurt it's a really cool product and they make it right here green recycling Hey, so this right here is called the grinder. What it does is it takes all sizes of materials and grinds them up into little bitty pieces just like this. It's crazy powerful and it's a huge piece of machinery. And you know what? It's moving around right now, but it's not actually driven by a driver. He's actually controlling it with a remote control. It's such a big, huge piece of equipment. We need to be careful around it. And see, it's got that big conveyor right on the back of it. Wow, look at it go. Now it doesn't drive real fast because it doesn't need to. It's a huge piece of machinery. So it usually gets to one spot and does its job. It's not constantly on the move. Wow, look at that. Now that conveyor belt is unfolding so that all that product will go to the right place. That's really cool. And that's all thanks to hydraulics and remote controls. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, this is really neat. So this giant piece of machinery, this grinder, this huge, huge grinder is controlled completely by this remote control right here. There's all sorts of buttons and information displayed on this little interface here. And somebody who's trained and skilled enough to operate it knows exactly the buttons to push to make it do its job. Isn't that really cool? This isn't like a video game. Well, it's kind of like a video game, but with this, instead of playing something on the television, you're moving something ginormous in real life just by using this remote control. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give it back to somebody who knows exactly how to use it so we can see this big piece of machinery operate. Wow, so see that? The conveyor belt is now engaged and it's gonna spin and move product. And guys, come over here real quick and check this out. So there's all these different parts to this big grinder, right? Look at that. That's like the, the dump area. He's gonna take that product and put it in there and then it's gonna go through all these spinning hammers and pulverizers, and it's gonna come out a lot smaller on this side on this conveyor belt. Wow, so much big material moving around completely effortlessly. I hear that machine firing up, it's getting louder, something's happening. Oh look, there it goes, it's going into the machine. See, wow, now off of the conveyor, all that product is already coming out. And we have really small pieces because they're grinding it up really fine. That is so cool. So you feed it on that side and your product comes out there. But this isn't just any normal product, right? This is green recycling in action. Who thought recycling could be so fun? This is amazing. Wow. Hey guys, come here real quick, come here. Look at the top of that grinder right there. That's where there's this wheel spinning really, really fast and working really hard to cut everything up into little bitty pieces. If you look real close over there, you can see that there's big pieces coming in, but look at the size of the product coming out. It's almost like sawdust, it's so fine, that's insane. Do you guys remember those ginormous piles of leaves we were looking at earlier? So this is what they're turned into eventually. This is called leaf compost. This is like, they call this black gold. It's about the best potting soil or the best planting soil you can get anywhere in the world. And it's made from all those leaves that people bring here. So isn't that really cool? We actually took it from leaves 
and recycled it, repurposed it into something that keeps the earth growing and keeps our plants really big and our vegetables healthy. So we get all kinds of fruits and veggies and things that are good to eat because rather than take them to the landfill, we brought them here to be composted. What a really cool concept. So even though it's Earth Day, we're not out planting trees, we're doing things like this to really, really have a significant impact on the Earth, just like our friends at Heirloom Soils of Texas do every single day. I mean, this, I wish you could feel it with me. It just, it feels so nice and it's really warm. And if I was a plant, I know I'd really love to thrive in something just like that. All right, guys, well, now that we've gotten through all of these different processes, we're here at the mixing pot. This is a really cool spot. So over here, they have all these different ingredients, like this stuff right here. Wow, do you know what this is? This is like a volcanic rock product called basalt, and it comes from Canipa, Texas, over by San Antonio. It's a lot of times when you see something moving on a train that looks like a bunch of big rocks, it's actually this stuff and it's really good for plants. Then you have things like this, which is expanded shell. That's crazy, look at that. And that's really good for drainage for plants. And there's also, you can't see it, but this product is actually very, very porous. There's all kinds of teeny tiny little holes in there and good places for microbes to hang out. And then you've got even more expanded shale. And oh, over here, come check this out. This is really cool. Did you guys know that they actually use coconut shells in soil mixes now? So you see a coconut, it has all that stuff on the outside of it. Well, this is it after they've ground it up into really cool stuff. So this is actually really fine coconut shell. So whenever they wanna make a specific mix for something, like say somebody's growing some cactus and they want a really good cactus soil, or say they wanna grow wildflowers, or say they wanted to grow shrubs or bushes, all kinds of different things. Maybe it's hanging basket plants. They take all of these components from all these different bays, they dump them here and they mix them up and make it into this stuff. And this is like the gold standard in, in mixes right here. This has a little bit of everything in it and you can literally grow anything in it. But this all came from green recycling. This was plants, trees, leaves, all those things. Well, this was actually just leaves, not, not trees but leaves and turned into this product when combined with other things. It's the best stuff on earth to grow things in. Isn't that really cool? And it's such a great way to reuse things and keep them out of the landfill because that's really important. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, here we are at the bagging operation. If you needed a big load of this stuff, you could come here and they would fill up the back of your truck or even the back of a trailer. But if you wanted to actually just buy a bag or two of it, they do that too. So this is their bagging facility. See right over there, that big hopper fills it up. And then this machine right here is the sealer. So it actually rolls through there and it seals up the bag. And I don't want to touch because this thing's going to kick it out. See that? <laughs> and now once it's on this conveyor, it's going to come right over here and roll down these and he'll load it up onto a cart and away it'll go. And you can actually buy this at a nursery. Isn't that really cool? Wow, I got to see that one more time. Look, there it goes. It just got kicked out. That is so cool. And thanks to all these machines, they're not having to do everything by hand. It's getting sealed and then it's going to come down here and get kicked. Whew. There it goes. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, what a whirlwind of a day. Earth Day, what a fantastic time of year. The weather out here is just absolutely perfect. Feel the wind. Hey, wait a second, are you guys laughing at my hair? Come on, I've been doing a lot of big work climbing that big hill. All right, I'll put my hat back on. But this has been such a cool adventure learning about green recycling, where we take things like waste from our trees and our yards and turn it into really good stuff that we can grow awesome veggies and plants in. Just like this red mulch right behind me. This might, some people use like red mulch, some people use darker mulch, but this is made right here on site. And this is trees that have been ground up. They were brought in from all kinds of folks all over the area. And we're, what we're, the important part about this is we're keeping product out of the landfill. We don't want trees and bushes and leaves to have to go to the landfill. That's not good because it takes a long time to, to decompose there and you're just adding to the mess. Here, it's actually be put back into good use and it could be back at your house in no time in usable form. Isn't that cool? 
All right, cowboys and cowgirls. It's been such a great time here today at Heirloom Soils of Texas. It's been really cool right here in Porter, Texas. Until next time I see you. Yeah! Howdy cowboys and cowgirls, it's me, Cowboy Jack, and today I'm somewhere really, really excited. You guys see where we are? That's right, we're at Dig World here in Katy, Texas. Have you guys ever heard of Dig World before? It's a brand new place for us to enjoy. It's a place where kiddos, little cowboys and cowgirls can drive some really big, really cool machines. We're going to get to do all of that. Come on, let's go check it out. Wow. See, now first off, let's take a look at some of the rules they have here at Dig World. Guests must obey all listed age, height, weight, and health restrictions. Now there's signs on every ride that tell you, you have to be this tall or this tall to do it. So we gotta make sure we're tall enough to do those rides. And there's all kinds of rules. You can read these right on their website. We don't need to go through them all right now, but you need to make sure before you come that you understand they've got rules to keep us all safe and make sure we're all having a great time. Here's a really cool map of the park. So there's all kinds of things for us to do, like gem mining. Have you guys ever mined for some gems? We're gonna get to do that together today. And then they've got all these skid steer tracks, a UTV track, places where we can dig with these machines, a bunch of different games we can play. Come on, let's quit looking at the map and let's just go check it out. Wow, cowboys and cowgirls, right inside the main gate, they've got this big old skid steer right here. And boy, it's got all these cool moving parts and all these big pieces, and it's fun to look at, right? But wouldn't it be really fun to drive it? I think it would. Do you guys want to come on a ride with me? That's exactly what it's all about here at Dig World. We get to do all of these experiences. So let's just go find something we can hop on and move around. Wow, cowboys and cowgirls, as we're moving through the park, there's all kinds of these cool signs around. And you know what? They're really informational. This says, let's talk soil. And this person's holding a big old handful of dirt, AKA soil. It says, did you know that it takes the earth up to 500 years to produce just one inch of topsoil? Wow, that's really interesting. But when you put it into perspective, every year when the seasons change and the leaves fall, it takes a while for that to compost into the ground, right? So that kind of makes sense. Man, there's just so much to look at all around in here. It's kind of making my head spin. Hey, wait, wait. Are you guys laughing at my hair already? Oh, come on, give me a break. Wow, see that's the gem mining operation right over there. And we're gonna be sure to do a little bit of mining and see what kind of gems we can find. But I've got to go over to these big machines over here and let's play some games. You guys wanna play some games? I heard they have like three or four different games we can play while we're actually driving those big machines. Wow. There's a racetrack I see. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. Here's another map, but uh, I can't even think about that. We're here with all these big machines. It's time to get some games under our belts, right? Wow. And see, whoop, 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 back up, back up. This is really important. See, we're here at the mini X games. That's excavator games. That's really cool. So the minimum height to ride, to ride is 32 inches. So if you're 32 inches, but you're not quite 48 inches, you would have to ride on an adult's lap or something like that because you're not quite big enough to reach everything. If you're 42 inches or taller, just like right here, you get to do it all by yourself. I think I'm good. Let's go do it. See, they've got these really cool construction ropes all along the side. Make us make sure we wait in line properly. So let's go right down here to the end. I saw something really cool down here. Wow. I mean, we're walking by these huge machines. They're just right here for us. This is so exciting. But there's one already running right down here. Let's check it out. Guys, look at this giant. This is a Cat 302.7. That's so neat. Look, all of these things run on hydraulics too. All these different hoses connecting to these different hydraulic cylinders. There's a lot of electronics that go along with it too. Wow, so this game is actually a duck game. What this is, this has a hook on the end of it and we've got these duck decoys in here. You guys ever seen a duck decoy up close? Quack, quack. <laughs> He's really cool, but we're gonna leave him in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in that 
uh, excavator and see if I can make this hook hook him and I'll put him over in this other pond all right let's give it a whirl wow I mean these machines are really tall Whew. so what's the first thing you do when you get in any vehicle you got to buckle up for safety right they have these big bright orange seat belts to make sure you're staying really safe now I'm gonna lock this down and it's time to get see how we can do at this game you guys ready all right cowboys and cowgirls it's time for me to try my luck and see if i can catch one of these duck decoys Ooh. almost there almost there oh no come on mr duck you know some ducks just don't want to be caught there it is i got him whoa and see i can swing him all around now parents it's important to know come look at me real quick now we're on these big machines and they are very powerful but they're controlled by electronics so little cowboys and cowgirls can't get in any kind of trouble if i were to swing this joystick way out that's about as far as it can go right there it's not going to go any further where it could actually encounter another park attendant Whew. okay well i'm going to drop this duck down in this other pond right here you got y'all ready all right mr duck you're free to go you guys think i could do it one more time let's see what we can do kind of tricky to catch these ducks come on ducky can't hide from me forever This is a harder game than I thought it would be. Whoops. <laughs> it gets a little bit confusing because there's so many different motions on this and you're running with all the different hydraulics. I need to scoot it out some, scoot it in. Now. Now, here we go. Oh, I almost, I got him. <laughs> that's duck number two going into the other pond all right mr duck you ready to be released enjoy your freedom and your space in the new pond look at that you guys think i could catch the last guy one more i think i'm starting to get the hang of this duck catching last duck one more time let's see what we can do here Come on, oh, I pushed it the wrong way. I had him and I let him go. Hmm. Come on, Mr. Duck. Well. <laughs> this is actually a really hard game. It's a lot of fun, but it's just like anything. You have to practice to get better. I've got him. <laughs> wow. All right. Now it's time for me to drop him safely down in his new pond. All right. Get in there with your friends, Mr. Duck. There you go. Whoops. Almost. I can't figure out how to let him go. <laughs> Some ducks don't want to be let go. There we go. All right, all clear. Let me get it ready for the next kiddo that wants to play. This was such a fun game to play. I've had a great time. All right, well now I'm gonna go ahead and get onto the next game. So I'm gonna load this up. I'm gonna unbuckle my safety belt. Boy, I love that. You guys see what color this seatbelt is? That's my favorite color orange. All right, well, what a really cool excavator game. But that was only one of them. There's a whole lot of them here. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, time for the next excavator game. This one, we're gonna try to pick up some of these really cool orange cones. So I'm gonna get up in it just like I got in the last one. 
And again, what do we do for safety? We gotta buckle in. Here's my orange, bright orange seatbelt. Now I'm gonna lower this down. And let's see if we can catch some cones. I feel like I'm gonna be doing pretty good. Those ducks were a lot of fun to catch, right? Woo, I've got my eye on that far cone there. I think if I just swing it back and forth enough, maybe we'll catch him. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Picked it all the way up. That's really neat. And you can see these machines are really big and really strong. You can pick it up a really far way. That will be about as high as this will go. But my goal is to try and stack it, right? So I'm going to try to put it on this other big cone. I've got it swinging a whole lot. <laughs> Whoa. Well. I, whoops. There we go. Look at that. Whoops. Oh. Hold on. Now I gotta figure out how exactly I'm gonna take it off here. Alright, let me see how I can get this cone off of here. Oh, look at that. I did it. Wow. Maybe if I could do one more, but I got to figure out how to bring this boom in a little further because I'm going to try to stack it on that closest orange cone right there. All right. Boy, there are so many different ways to move this device, and that's the tricky part of it. You have to figure out which way is best. Oh, I'm so close. I wish you guys would cheat for me and go out there and touch it. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. There it is. Woohoo. All right. Now, let me figure out how we can stack it on this closest cone here. Not up quite high enough. Boy, I've got it swinging really fast. Got away for just the right time. There it is, almost. Maybe if I lean it out. Uh. What do you guys think? Is this recoverable? No. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this cone back down. Uh, some cones just aren't meant to be stacked. <laughs> Boy, that was a whole lot of fun. Wow. All right, so I'm gonna undo my safety belt go ahead and see what else there is to do. I saw some really big blocks over here. Guys, check these out. Come here. Wow. See, this next machine has these. These are like Legos, building blocks. That's really cool. We can't quite stack them on each other because they have those big hooks on them. But it'd be cool to pick one up and swing it around a little bit. You guys want to do that? All right, let me get it started up for us. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, we're at the next event. And see, this is a regular huge excavator but they've got this computer making sure that everything we do is really safe here at the park that computer makes sure come over let's just keep talking about it that computer makes sure that until you're buckled in and have the safety completely on and engaged that this isn't going anywhere but wow we're about to pick up some of these really cool blocks i see a lot of different colors you guys see what color this is that's a yellow block and then right here one of Cowboy Cadence, no, not one of Cowboy Cadence. Cowboy Cadence's absolute favorite color in the world, blue. And then of course, we've got a really pretty green one right here. All right, well, let me get up in there and see if we can pick these up. Woo! All right, safety belt. And now we're ready to go. I'm gonna try to pick up that green one. All right, let's pick up that green one. Let's see what we can do here.
Oh, I almost had it. There it is. Woo! I picked up that block. All right. And see, now we've picked it up. We can move it from side to side, kind of go all over with it. And it's really fun to experiment with these joysticks that control this. Because it's not like a normal steering wheel or just buttons on a video game or something like that. And this, we're having fun with these, but these machines are used as real tools in the real world. When grown-ups are building something, they would use these to dig and move earth and all kinds of things. All right, I let go of my green Lego. Boy, this was really cool. Well, now that we talked about it, would you guys want to see what these machines can do digging real dirt? I know I do. I've never actually gotten to dig with one. Let's go do that for a minute. <laughs> That's going to be so much fun because they can't, couldn't call it dig world unless you're actually allowed to dig, right? They've got some really cool dig pits where we can use excavators just like this to dig real holes. Come on, let's go. Wow, cowboys and cowgirls, I found another sign that's got a really interesting fact on it. Take a look right here. It says, where is the largest man-made excavation? A mine southwest of Salt Lake City, Utah is the largest man-made excavation. It dips nearly three quarters of a mile down and covers 1,900 acres. That's the equivalent of almost 19 Disneyland parks. That's huge. Do you guys know where Utah is? Utah is out west of us here in Texas. It's a beautiful place. Wow, three quarters of a mile down. That's a really deep mine and that's a cool picture of it. See, and it's cut in these like strides because in order to get down to the bottom of it, they have to drive along these curvy, curvy tracks to get all the way down there. Boy, they've gone and dug a really deep hole, haven't they? Well, in keeping the spirit of that, let's go dig ourselves a deep hole right in this dig pit right here. All right, let's make sure. Yep, I'm still tall enough, thank goodness. Let's go. Wow. And I just love all these bright yellow chains that tell us where we need to stand at. All right, well, here we are at the dig pit. I'm about to get in this excavator and dig that sand and see what kind of holes we can make. All right, let me climb on up. Now, buckle in for safety because I'm going to be moving some big dirt here. Now, let's just see what kind of holes we can make. Whoa! What? This is so much fun. Oh, let me see if I can swing it out. Whoop. Wow! It's kind of tricky to get the hang of this, but I want to grab a big old claw full of dirt over here. There we go, now I got it figured out. Look at that, we scooped it up. Now I can swing it around. You guys ready for me to dump it? <laughs> wow, I'm getting some sand in my face over here. Let's see if I could scoop some right out here. Whoop. <laughs> Man, these things move really fast. Wow, this is so much fun. Whew, I'm making a mess, aren't I? This is a whole lot of fun. See? 
This is exactly what this park is built for, for us to have a good time and get to play with this big equipment. I'm doing the best I can do trying to figure this out. Boy, I could stay out here moving dirt all day. It's a whole lot of fun. Let's see. Let me see if I can grab a whole nother big claw. I'm gonna dump it from real high, wow! Woo! Look at that big old claw, that is so cool! Ah! Like I said, it's really tricky to move these machines all around. There's so many different levers and ways you can move it. I mean, guys, come here real quick, come over here. See, take a look. Just to move this around, you have to use these joysticks. This one turns us like this. Whoop, whoop. This one moves us up and down. And But when I'm pushing forward or back, that lifts it up or down. But it's confusing because when I go left, it brings it in tight. And when I push it out, it goes out. So there's a lot of things to keep in mind when you're driving one of these big machines. And somebody who does this for a living has a really good skill set because it's not just anybody that can pick up one of these and start working with it. I mean, it's a lot of, it's, it takes probably a long time to get used to it. And like everything, with practice, we get better at everything. Wow. Wow. See, wouldn't this be fantastic to come here and just dig in this dirt and have a lot of fun? Wow. But, you know, as I'm sitting here driving this and digging my dirt, I keep seeing this racetrack out there. Boy, there's a big racetrack. I need to go drive on that. So let me go ahead and get on out of here. Take off my safety belt. And here we go. All right, let's go see the racetrack. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, here we are at the skid steer track. And just to recap, if you are under this tall, you gotta ride with an adult. But I'm a little bit taller than 48 inches, right? I'm all the way this tall, even with my cowboy hat off. And boy, that breeze feels... Hey, stop laughing in my hair. Let's go race on this track. Come on, guys. This is gonna be a whole lot of fun. Wow, I can already hear it running. It's really loud because it's a huge, big machine. Whew. Now see, when you're here, you have to wait for your turn and somebody will let you in. Here we go, our very own skid steer. All right, look, it's got these really big tires on it. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and take a lap around the course. Woo All right, now, you guys ready? I gotta take the parking brake off. <laughs> There's a parking brake right here. Now that parking brake is off and we can go. Wow. Boy, this is really unique. I've never driven one of these on a track before. See, I'm driving it with these joysticks. It's really fun. It's a lot different. Usually I'd be cruising with a steering wheel. You know what? I feel like I gotta do something while I'm driving this. Don't you? Yeehaw! Wow, and around we go. It's confusing. You wouldn't wanna be going too fast on this because you have to drive with this joystick and it operates a lot differently than a normal car. I think I've got the hang of it. I could be a professional skid steer operator. There's a lot of buttons and things up in here. Whoa. Hey, when you're driving, pay attention to the road. Don't be looking around. Wow, this was a really cool track.
cowboys and cowgirls. Let's finish up the track. Wow. This has been so much fun driving this all the way around. See, I'm going to park it right back behind where we started. All right. Now I got to put the parking brake back on. And I'll lift up these safety guides right here, and I'm good to go. Woo! What a cool ride. I gotta get one of these to scoot around town, and that'd be pretty cool, right? See Cowboy Jack driving a skid steer through traffic? Nah. <laughs> I'll stick with my truck, but that was a whole lot of fun. You know what? They also have UTV racing here. Wow! So the same rule applies about the height. You guys get it, right? Well, let's get in here and drive this really cool UTV. Whoa. All right. You guys want to take a look around this thing? This is a Honda Pioneer 520. It's got these really cool parts to it, like this red truck bed for if you needed to haul something around. You could put it right back here and get on your way. It's got these really big, really cool tires for gripping in the mud. And then of course, you know what this is up here? This is a roll cage. In case you got going too fast or any kind of danger, you'll have your seatbelt on, but this keeps your head protected actually if you were in a rollover event. You would never want that to happen. But wow, it's even got headlights up here. Whoa. Well, let's just get in there and drive. All right, here we go. So this thing is just like you're driving a car. We close the door here and we're good to go. Let me just start it up. There we go. Now it's got a parking brake down here. I'm going to release and we're off to the races. Whoops, I almost forgot. Got to put on a seatbelt before we drive, right? All right, now that I got my seatbelt on, we're good to drive. Boy, I think this thing is cruising in style. All right. Wow, all the way around the track. Here we come, all the way around the curve. And see, when you drive, you need to be safe. Keep your hands at 10 and two. Just like this was a clock face. You guys wanna take a look at that real quick? Woo! I've already come to the end of the track, so I'll go ahead and unbuckle my seat belt. But you guys can take a look at that in here with me. All right. So this is a regular steering wheel, right? So when we say our hands at 10 and two, imagine this is 12 o'clock and this is six o'clock on the clock face. So 10 o'clock will be right about over here, just above nine o'clock. And then two o'clock will be right over here. That way you can drive really safely and you know you're not gonna have any kind of issues on the road, especially when you're driving something crazy like this red UTV, wow. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Wow, I feel like we've driven so many different things here today. This is crazy. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. I'm here at Old Jimmy's Mining Company. You know what that means? It's time to do a little gem mining. Now, I've got this sand here that I'm gonna put in this bucket and we're gonna go through it together and see if we can find a few gems. Let me just open this up. <laughs> and I'm gonna dump it in this sifter right here now let's take it over to the water see what we can find now what you want to do is see we've got all this sand in here and it's got some really cool things in it i don't want to give away too much but we're going to use this water and sift through it like this and what we're doing is we're making all of that sand that was surrounding it go through those little bitty holes so we can get to the good stuff and you can use all kinds of different water flows to clear it all out. 
I think I've just about got it and we can take a look at all these gems that we found. Wow. You guys think we found any gold? I don't think there's any gold in here, but wow, look at these. There's all kinds of pieces of like some clear quartzite maybe. Yeah. See, Cowboy Jack actually loves rocks in real life. So, whoa. That's a really cool one. See how it's got a very unique shine to it? And these really cool... Wait a second. Maybe we did find some gold. Ah, eh, I'm just kidding. That's pyrite. But it looks a lot like gold. Isn't that cool? Boy. And see, all of this came out of that bag. And we're just looking through here and seeing all the... Wow, look at this crystal. See, this is actually a natural crystal. How it grew into this form right here. That is so cool. It kind of looks like superman's uh kryptonite or something right and then we've got some really cool colors that i know cowboy kaden would love like these blue rocks and even some of his favorite these dark blue rocks whoa this is so cool let me see if i can wash it off just a little bit more wow look at this whoo Cowboy Jack got a little bit excited. I thought this was a piece of Texas chert. You guys know what chert is? That's the scientific name for flint. And flint is what the indigenous people of Texas would use to make their tools out of, like arrowheads, a long, long time ago, even before cowboys came to Texas. That is so cool. Wow, what a great time looking at all these different rocks and all these minerals that we found out of the earth right here. At Jimmy's Mining here at Dig World. All right, well, I can't stay here and mine all day, so I'm just going to leave these here. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Wow, now that we've driven, dug, raced, looked at, explored, mined for gems, we've done a lot of things. On the way out of this place, they have a really cool store where you can get all kinds of goodies from Dig World. Wow, see, they have everything from like stuff for the big kids to all of the things for little kids, like a Dig World high visibility safety vest, t-shirts, bags. Wow, this is so cool. I bet Cowboy Caden would really love a shirt like that. Wow, and Tower Ball. Wow, I've seen Tower Ball before. That's a really cool backyard game. We're gonna probably play it real soon. It's real fun. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Wow, we've had a blast here today at Dig World in Katy, Texas. It's been so much fun. I mean, let's talk about some of the activities we've done. I got to dig with an excavator. I got to play games with a lot of different excavators. I got to drive that really cool red UTV over there around the track. I got to drive the skid steer around the track. I went gem mining. Now I'm up here with this gigantic, huge machine. I mean, look at it. We talk about this all the time. Cowboy Jack's about six feet tall. This thing is ginormous, wow. I mean, just to get up in it, you gotta go all the way up here and climb up, whoa. I mean, wow, this thing is huge. I mean, I'm almost standing up inside of it. But if I took my cowboy hat, hey, even when I'm up here, you guys are laughing at my hair. All right, let me put my hat back on. I'll come on back down. Boy, that thing is ginormous. It is so, so big. Anyways, cowboys and cowgirls, I had a fantastic time today, and I hope you did too. Until next time I see you, 